Hi guys, hi guys. Dr. Wendy Dearborn. That's right, guys. Dr. Wendy Dearborn is in the house with you today. Welcome, welcome to the show. Today is, where are we? Tuesday, the 20th of July, 2021. And the hour is, what time is it? The hour is 10 a.m. That's right, guys, 10 a.m. on the 21st of July. Can you believe we are well into the year? We are already seven months into the year, seven seven months going into eight months into the year. It has moved so quickly. Well, at times it feels like it's moved quickly. Well, guys, my name's Dr. Wendy Dearborn. I am a choice expert and a universal laws expert. And what I do is support you in creating the life that you say that you want to live not what I say but what you say you want I'm a true believer that everybody has the answers to all their questions and the solutions to all their problems within them so welcome to the show and that's basically what I do on the show you know I talk about choice number one I talk about choice everything is all about choice and I talk about the the universal laws and you and how to stitch it all together. Well, I have been conducting a series that I I thought was going to go a lot quicker than this. And then I realized the other day that mm, I realized when when I started episode three, that it's not going to go as quickly as I had anticipated. But that being said, um, I'm conducting a series or sharing a series with you called the universal laws and what that means to you. And, oh, excuse me, universal laws and what you need to know. It's really important in order to use any tool effectively. And the universal laws are like any tool that you wield. They are your spiritual tools. We have spiritual tools. And the universal law is a huge part of your spiritual toolbox. And so in order to use any tool effectively and confidently and with a level of skill that Uh, produces the results that you want you must know how it works you have to know how the particular tool that you are working or using works you need to know what the power source is or the source of power needed to make this tool operational which happens to be you you're 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 the power source right in fact you need to know how to turn this tool on and off It's also important that you have clear knowledge of this tool's capabilities and its limitations. And it's important at all times you adhere to safety instructions. Do you know safety instructions are put in place? Those are parameters that will allow you to work to your best ability without being fearful. That's all safety instructions are. But the universal laws, like any tool, it could be a saw, it could be a chainsaw, a lawnmower, um, a, a, a kitchen knife, a paring knife, a knife, a fork, a spoon, a dishwasher. It can be anything, uh, you know, a washing machine, like any tool, any tool. Only with practice will you become the master of it. Really important. And so, guys, what I'm going to say on the on the tail of that or on the end of that is simply this. Just because I am saying it doesn't mean it is so for your life. I am bringing to you my experience, my personal experience. And it's important to understand this isn't about cloning people. This is about what I'm doing here is about sharing information so that you can take that information and you can mold it. You could you you can mold it to suit who you are, to suit how you are, mm, how you are trying to create or how you are wanting is a better word to create the life that you are living. So my experience, hear me clearly, is mine. I share the knowledge with you and you take this knowledge and you mold it. You take from it that which you want. 
and everything else you kick it to the curb if you think that I am talking BS from the get-go, you just kick it to the curb. This is not for you. And it's all to the highest good. You must do your own due diligence. You must do your own due diligence. And there are multiple reasons why. But I'll just boil it all down to this. Because only you can answer for you and the things that you have chosen to do. So whatever you hear me share, us share, or whomever share, recognize it's from their perspective. It, this is from my perspective. It cannot be from yours. So do your own due diligence. Very, very important. So, okay, guys. Um, if you've listened to the show before, you know you would have heard this. Da, 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 da. And what is that? I need a pen. What is that? That is the bell. And the bell says, um, the bell says that I need you to listen up and to pay attention because I'm going to say something or I'm segueing into something different or there's something that I think that's really important that that I, I want you to hear so every time you hear this sit up and pay attention guys well in part three we got to where did we get to in part three let me just pull up my little notes here right in part three we actually finished with the universal law of justice and the universal law of justice isn't um what's it Hammurabi's code uh, hopefully I'm saying that right Hammurabi's code it's not Hammurabi, ha, Hammurabi's code code which stipulates an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth a life for a life that sort of thing you know and diamond for a diamond what have you those sort of that sort of justice was imposed by Mesopotamian kings as a way of meeting out justice a, a, a form of man-made justice yeah the universal law of justice is simply this. It's designed to establish a balance and establish balance and divine order within the universe. Once the choice, once you've made a choice, and this choice can be made either consciously or, or unconsciously. This law establishes balance where chaos ensues. Even if we, after we've made a choice as humans, cannot see that chaos. And chaos doesn't always mean you know something's wrong chaos means that change is happening so the universal law of justice works on establishing energy and a balancing energy a divine order energy between two polarities and when i say between two polarities what i mean is happy sad um love which is where we're going hate um that sort of thing wet dry cold hot establishing a balance a balance and balance is all that we are looking for so okay my darlings let us proceed right as you know um we are definitely going alphabetically and we are now into the l's and we are going to look at the universal law of love and this is a huge one this is this is huge I'm, I'm going to make the assumption that this isn't going to take up the entire show today. But we're going to look at the universal law of love. Now, the universal law of love isn't or it's not based upon that which we have built our romantic notions on. In actual fact, the word romance, the etymology of the ro word romance comes from um, or, 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 or its meaning is roman style like from the roman era roman style so romance as we know it to be isn't even what we think it to be and it definitely has nothing to do with the um the universal law of love the universal law of love has nothing to do with the giving of and or experiencing affection or experiencing of affection and or physical intim 
physical intimacy and or sex. It has nothing to do with that. There is absolutely nothing romantic about the universal law of love. And if you don't take anything away from any of these, any of these, um, any of these series, right? Whether one through we're, we're now four, take this to the bank. There is absolutely nothing romantic about the universal law of love. In actual fact, the etymology of the word love started out by meaning something, by meaning to care for something or to desire something or to esteem something. You know, back in the day, if you like um, period dramas and you know, I, 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 I love those. Back in the day, you, you would hear, they wouldn't say, oh, I love you. They would say, I esteem you right? Because they're talking about affection. They're talking about feelings. Yeah. Now over the centuries, the word love has morphed into its, if you will, and I'm saying this rather broadly, but into the Germanic interpretation to mean libido. And hence we are where we are now with the word love that in that regard has been boiled down to intimacy, intimacy between people. And even with that, even with that, the word love has been really colloquialized to mean that you like something, you know, oh, I really love Rocky Road ice cream or, you know, I really love that movie or I really love that movie star, I really love that song. Oh, that's my jam. You don't know. All you know is four words. But yeah, that's my jam. That's my song, man. I really love that. You know, it's been colloquialized and, and, and boiled down to mean many things with the exception of what it really means. So as a brief snapshot, the universal law of love, the, excuse me, as a snapshot, the universal laws are a collection of um, laws that sometimes come together and they enmesh, you know, they're enmeshed and they work as a collaborative and sometimes they are individual. Yet, even if they come together as a collaborative and they are enmeshed, where sometimes you can't tell where one ends and one begins, what they are, what the universal laws are, they are individual streams of consciousness that support you in manifesting what it is that you want to experience in your life. Now, many of the universal laws have been designed to work in tandem with other laws, but yet they can work individually. Many of the laws, again, have been, work, have been created so that they work in tandem with each other. And what this does is it creates a strong interlocking bond of in, intentional conscious energy that truly ups the chances of you... Um, of you experiencing or having the desired thing that you want to manifest. And guys, um, I'm sure that I went over this because this is in the D category, but the universal law of desire, this is an energetic stream or it is a law that will unlock the power of love the universal love to transmute. You see, in order for you to want something, in order for you to get it, you have to desire it in a way that it is a part of your, I'm going to say your spiritual DNA, your soul. You have to truly desire it for the universal law, this universal law of attraction, for this universal law to transmute. The universal law of love. Let me do this, guys. Let me just let me just ring the bell here. 
Right, ho hopefully, hopefully that was clear because I know sometimes I can uh, get up inside my head with this stuff. So the universal law of love, it isn't about romance. It isn't about um, truly affection. It isn't about spiritual, uh, excuse me, it isn't about uh, physical intimacy. It isn't about sex. It, 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 it isn't about you liking something and not liking something. It's not about you loving chocolate and, you know, loving mashed potatoes and cool. It's not about that. The universal law is about transmutation. The universal law is about change. So love is the law of transmutation. The true definition of love it's about the law of transmutation and this law is invoked by the depth of how much you want something this law is invoked by the universal law of desire do you know guys without love and once again i'm not speaking of romantic love so without the universal law of love, without the, the ability to transmute, the actual movement required of atomic molecules to move into form and out of form or to change and come forth in the form of a manifestation, it wouldn't happen. Basically, love is the law that brings about physical or tangible change. Once again, guys, once again, it is not about romance. It is not about romance. And I can understand that a non-romantic idea of what love is can be a challenge to grasp. And it really can. Because once again, guys, the word love is used as a colloquialism to describe one's depth of feelings and the depth of attachment. And the attachment that you have to those feelings in regard to people places and things once again in uh, as a colloquialism this word it, it runs the gamut from how you feel about someone to the degree that you like something i kind of love this dress and kind of gives you the degree of where you feel to what you love to eat on your pizza and because of the colloquial use of this word love, the emotional meaning that we have attached to it and the true nature of its power has become ob obscure from us. But even with that, oh, let me do this. Here we go, guys. I just got to hit. But even with that, even with that, the law knows what it's meant to do. The universal law knows what it's meant to do and it knows what it's not meant to do. So even with us romanticizing and using the word love as a colloquialism, the universal law of love knows what it needs to do. And that law, that law is about bringing about change. Bringing about change. The universal law of love is the law of transmutation. The vibration of this energy can change all things and all conditions, all forms. And all substance, all substance, substances, substances. There you go, guys. This is what it does. The universal law of love initiates the physicality of the change.
that we want to see in our lives. So the next time you say you love something, know that you're talking about how much you like it. The next time you say you're in love with somebody, know you're talking about how much, um, how much affection you feel, how much compassion you may feel, how much desire you may feel. The upside, once again, the upside to us taking this word and truly twisting it on I don't know how many different axes, 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 no, twisting it on an axis, there you go, and um, I don't know how many levels that we have twisted this on, the laws know what they need to do, the laws know what they need to do, and that's the most important thing, as I said to you a moment ago, there are many laws that are um, there, um, enmeshed and they come together the universal law of love for anything that is creating change in your life the universal law works in tandem with it so guys hopefully that has given a nice um given you a nice definition and understanding of what the universal law of love means once again it's not about romance it's about change and it's about change that is initiated through desire it's not about your honey and loving your honey and you know it's it's not about all of that guys you know loving your fried chicken and all, it's not about all of that it is so far beyond all of that and actually it's really necessary the universal law of love i was about to i was just about to ring the bell actually but the universal law of love really works its way into the, um, the universal law of forgiveness. It, 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 it's really important. It really, and I think that came in in, in series two, perhaps, um, or part two. But it, 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 it really lends itself to forgiveness. Because with forgiveness comes change in order for change to come you need the love and the universal love you need the universal love but anyway guys let us proceed to the next one right the next one we are now in the m's okay and we're going to talk about the the universal law of magnetism, I believe, is the next one. The universal law of magnetism. Now, they speak about the universal law of attraction. Okay. Without magnetism, there is no universal law of attraction. Okay. There is, there ain't, ain't happening the way in which it has been sold to you. It's not happening that way. The universal law of magnetism, this law pulls or attracts to you all other laws required for creating a conscious stream of energy that will, <coughs> excuse me, a conscious, a conscious stream of energy for which you are wanting to manifest in, into your life. So the universal law of magnetism creates a conscious stream of energy with all the other laws that are required so that you can manifest that which you say that you want. So this magnetism is huge because in for you to manifest, say, um, okay, for you to manifest your your home your car perfect mate perfect job what have you for you to manifest this you truly might need the law of forgiveness the universal law of visualization you might need the law of imperfection the law of honesty 
the law of gratitude and the law of grace. Based on where you are in your life, you may need all of these laws to be pulled together. Now for me, I want a house too. We're going to leave it as a house, right? I want a house too. Based on where I am in my life, the universal law of magnetism actually recognizes that I need operational in my life. The law of the universal law of negativity. I need operational, the universal law of opposites. I need the universal law of faith, the universal law of, of divine flow, and the universal law of expectation. I need these laws in my life so that I can manifest that which I say that I want. We don't all need the same laws. Based on who we are, what we are wanting, where we're going and what we need. So we all need different laws. We all need different things. And the universal law of, of magnetism helps to pull and helps to attract the other laws that you need. So that you can create that conscious stream of energy that will go to the point of creation where the universal law of love will assist in the process of transmutation, changing that which you have as a picture in your mind into something that is physical, something that is tangible. So that's the universal law of magnetism. So guys, the next law that we're going to deal with is the universal law of um, manifestation. Now, the universal law of manifestation, people always talk about manifestation, but the universal law of manifestation, this law makes that which you have magnetized tangible. It makes it physical. It makes the unform take on a form it will move energy into form and out of form in short it manifests so this law brings to you that which you have magnetized to yourself through speaking the words through actually not only speaking the words because speaking the words don't always get it you need some desire behind that you need some belief behind that you need some um a, a, a visualization a, a living moving breathing visualization behind that there are a couple of things you need behind that but this law brings into into um form the thing that you have said that you want. The universal law of magnetism. And guys, you know, with all these laws, I, I hope you see how important they are individually and how powerful they are collectively and how you can have, hmm, I'm going to say ultimate control over your thought process. And actually, no, I'm going to back that up. How you can have ultimate control over how you respond to your thought process. You see, guys, it's all in how you respond. It's not really the thought, but it's how you respond to the thought that counts. Magnetism, uh, sorry, manifestation is huge. Okay, the universal law of negativity. Woohoo! Here we go. Negativity, for the most part, when people speak about negativity, it's another thing that um, does have a very negative connotation in people's lives. It's another word that has been taken and um, hmm, utilized somewhat out of context, a, a little like love 
The universal law of negativity is a wonderful law. It's actually designed to show you contrast and parallels, or if you want, pros and cons. The law of negativity plays a key role in your ability to find your own, hear me clearly guys, to find your own clarity. To find your own clarity using your five senses in regard to what feels good to you and what doesn't. All this is done so that you have an opportunity to make a conscious choice or to make conscious choices that are in the best interest of self. The universal law of, of negativity, it shows you and it truly shows you how powerful your thoughts are. The universal law of negativity also supports the universal law of polarity and the universal law of opposites. And we're going to get to the universal law of opposites and polarity. I'm not sure if we will get to, we might get to polarity today. All right. But the universal law of opposites, the universal law of negativity is instrumental, is instrumental in you being able to decipher for yourself, for you, yourself, not being told what's right for you, what's wrong for you, what you don't like, what you do like. And God knows we have so much of that going on. So much of the, the, the um, you know, sort of like advertising. People don't even realize there's a psychology that's been used. And I'm going to say used against you to get you to buy whatever it is that they are selling, whatever it is that they are peddling. It's just like the universal laws or the universal law of attraction. You guys have been sold a bill of goods that really and truly isn't, it's wrong, it's erroneous. And as a result, people aren't getting what they need because they are not utilizing the laws correctly. And I'm gonna climb down off my soapbox because you know guys I can go there with that so let me just get back on track and on point and on topic the universal laws of negativity they're important because they show you contrast and parallels if you will and they definitely can show you your pros and cons so you can make a choice a definitive choice that is yours with full clarity with full transparency 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 and clarity okay so moving on to the next law oh actually we're, we're kind of zipping along today ain't we we're kind of zipping along today the universal law of order hmm. whichever way you look at things there is a specific method of the way in which things must be done. This law, the universal law of order, invokes the steps, both seen and unseen, that must be adhered for, for your manifestation to come forth. Okay? This law, the universal law of order, is guys it is imperative it is imperative i mean it's like you can't you know you 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 don't sort of have a, a baby and um you know you don't have the baby first then i was going to use baby that's that's not perhaps the right right thing to do um guys there is an order that things need to be done okay in order for you to have apples and you want to do this yourself, there is a, an order or a defined flow, divine order, if you will. There's, there's an order in which things must be done. Now, you can either go to the grocery store and buy the apples already done. 
But if you want to grow the apples yourself, you need to either plant a seed and then or plant a tree. You're going to need to nurture it so it can grow. When it grows to a certain point and it grows to a certain maturity, it will bear the fruit that you want, which is the apples. And so there is an order. There is definitely an order to everything that we do. And there has to be order. Even though, um, even though uh, chaos, even though the universal law of justice will support in making sure there's a balance in the chaos, there must be order. There must be order. And there is a divine order order to things. So the next law is the universal law of opposites. And this is kind of like, I, I have many favorite law. Well, I, I was going to say this, but I, I've got many laws that are perhaps my favorite. But the universal law of opposites speaks to the extremes in life and the need for extremes. Okay, guys? The contrasting, uh, I was going to say contrasting par contrast for parallels, but the universal law of opposites, they actually do provide contrasting measurements to show you that you have moved in a specific direction and how far you have moved. Without having an opposing marker, guys, you'll never know, you'll never know that you've moved. It'll be like running on the spot. And so this law provides a center point in which you can find your balance, in which the universal law of balance is enmeshed. So the universal law of opposites, much like the universal law of duality, hot, cold, you know, uh, wet, dry, love, hate, that sort of thing. OK, it provides a contrasting measurement and you need that. You need that. You need that opposing marker so you can tell how far you've moved. If you're in a room. If you're in a room, you're in a you're in a uh, you, you're you're in a OK, you're in a, a large room, say it's a ballroom or a stadium size room or something like that. In order for you to know how far you have walked across the room. You really need to know from where you've come. You need to know from where you've come. And the universal law of opposites speaks to that extreme. It speaks to that contrast. It speaks to the ability to be able to measure that, to quantify it. You came from the chairs or the bleachers and you're heading towards the door. Without being able to have that contrast that gives you the ability to measure your distance, you never know how far you come. This is why people say they get lost in, they can get lost in a forest actually, surrounded by trees, or they can get lost in, in, in a desert. And they're walking and walking and walking and walking and they don't know how far they've gone. They don't even know if they're going in circles. Because there's nothing there. There's no opposing marker. Or they haven't established an opposing marker to quantify it. It's really, really important. Very, very important. This, this actually is a... So, some of the laws, you know, for me, they are... Hmm, Okay, some of the laws are like the, the, the small stitches that will hold a garment together. Without the stitches, the garment will fall apart. And some of these laws, they are, oh, let me phrase it this way. All the laws are important, but some of them, they've got that kind of zinger. And it's not like the universal law of gratitude, the universal law of forgiveness, the universal law of uh, visualization, the universal law of imagination, the universal law of love. It's not that kind of zinger. 
and I suppose this is what I like because some of them they, they're just so individual but yet so powerful within their individuality powerful okay guys um that was the opposite oh sweet baby jesus okay okay dr wendy this law was written for me this next law was written for me the universal law of patience the universal law oh lord the universal law of patience I just don't even know, guys. I don't even know where to begin with this. But the universal law of patience allows things to manifest and or unfold. Because sometimes the unfolding isn't the manifesting, but it's the things that need to be done. Other things that need to be added in order for the manifestation to come forward. So the universal law of patience allows things to manifest and or unfold in a time frame that is conducive to the success and the highest good of all concerned. Now, I'm going to speak for myself personally. Patience is a nemesis and I call it as such and I'm, I'm not calling it into action, I'm owning it. And I realized that patience is something that over the years that I have had to work on. Most of the careers that I have chosen, most of the career paths that I have chosen, it has, I've had to have infinite patience. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And so, as I said, patience is something that I work on continuously. And it's not one of those things that are that's in the back of my mind or a, a subconscious thing. No, I'm really conscious of the fact that I am impatient and that this is one of the laws that I work on continuously, continuously and consciously. So let me ask you this. Which laws do you work on continuously and consciously? But anyway, the universal law of patience, really, it does allow things to manifest and unfold in a time frame that is conducive to success. And success is the key word here as well. And above all, the highest good of, you know, for all concerned. What this law does, it prevents things from um, transpiring in a way that skips small steps that can undermine you manifesting what it is you want or or attaining your desired goal and again the law of opposites this is one of this is one of the things that i was talking about so a small step wouldn't be skipped so a small step of being able to quantify how far you you've come if you're not able to do that, that might be something that gets skipped and that doesn't help you. So the universal law of patience literally allows, it prevents things from transpiring in a way that hops and skips over steps which undermine the goal that you want or your desired manifestation. The universal law of patience also provides you with a unique opportunity to experience yourself and to get to know yourself in a way that can only add to the cachet of who you are. The universal law of, of, of patience, it also creates space in which you can grow and patience allows you to see your manifestation unfold before your eyes and it also allows you to course correct you know you could have said that you wanted this and believe me it's going to manifest but you can also course correct so that on the heels of this manifestation you can make change where change needed needs to be made Is it important to consciously invoke the universal law of patience? And I'm going to ask you that question. 
Is this law important enough for you to consciously invoke? And when I say invoke, for you to consciously give yourself a checkup from the neck up or from the neck to the ground to, to check yourself. Is it important? Will patience allow you to get to know yourself? Will patience allow you to experience yourself? And will patience allow you to see in living color that which you have wanted be transmuted by the universal law of love and watch it move into form like a cloud formation moves in the sky. So again, is it important for you to invoke the universal law of patience? And only you can answer that question. Only you. Okay, guys. Oops, wrong thing. That's what happens. I, 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 I've got this tendency. And here goes with patience. When I'm clicking on the computer, I just click, 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 click. And the other day, um, my my PC had to go to the hospital at the Greek Squad Hospital because I was happily clicking and I clicked some stuff that I shouldn't have clicked. And so my my computer wasn't very well after that. But that's because I'm impatient. And I recognize that and I try to work on that. And this happened, what, last week, okay? So this for me, patience is, is a, <laughs> patience is a work in progress. So the universal law of polarity, I did ring the bell. Polarity, guys, these are really important things, okay? All right, so the universal law of polarity, it speaks to the symbiotic relationship found at the ends of each spectrum I'm not talking about the middle bit the balance I'm not talking about the center point I'm talking about the extremes okay I'm talking about the universal law of opposites the extremes the universal law of polarity speaks to the symbiotic and that's a good relationship everybody benefits here the symbiotic relationship found at the ends of each spectrum, i.e. happy or sad, black or white. True black is the presence of all color. And for those of you who are artists, I'm coming from a holistic standpoint. I'm coming from a holistic standpoint and to a certain degree, um, hair coloring standpoint. OK, uh, I'm not coming from, you know, you mix your acrylic palette, you know, plate blue, magenta and whatever to get black. That's not what I'm talking about. OK, so don't email me with that. Right. So true black is the presence of all color. True white is the absence of all color. Bearing in mind that you cannot have one without the other. Yet each has a different vibration, feel, texture, and tonal value. One is positively charged and the other is negatively charged. So understand, one is hot and one is dry. One attracts and the other repels and so it is in life. We spend 24-7, 365 days oscillating between these poles oscillating between happy and sad oscillating between rich and poor healthy and unhealthy wealthy and unwealthy content and discontent at ease and being diseased we spend our lives our entire lives oscillating between the poles. It's important to understand as we oscillate, move back and forward, bounce back and forward between the two poles. It's important to understand that without you 
being sad. You could never know what happiness is. You could never know what happiness is. You can know the degree of each by the universal law of opposites. That shows you the contrast, which allows you the measurement to show you where you are in that situation. How far are you away from being unhappy? Or how far away are you away from being happy? It shows you. It provides you with the contrasting, uh, contrasting marker so that you can oscillate and find your center point and balance. But oscillate we will. Oscillate we will. Very, th these laws are so important, guys. These laws, laws are so important. Okay. And, and hopefully that was clear, guys. Hopefully that was clear. The universal law of process. <sighs> I had a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend. And uh, from the first time I met her, that, that's her word. It's a process. Whether things are good or whether that's bad, it's a process. It's a process. And I actually think that she has been successful in her career because this is one of her underlying words process the universal law of process this is having conscious awareness that we uh, excuse me this is having conscious awareness that we have things to accomplish in our life and to do this we must set hear me guys we must set a direction so that we can invoke the universal law of order in creation. And we spoke about the universal law of order in creation in, I'm going to tell you, the universal law of order in creation. Can she find it? It's like, come on, Wendy. The universal law of order in create. There, there you go. We spoke about this. I believe it had to be be in part one and if not part one part two okay so we spoke about the universal law of order in creation and it's the beginning of anything um, that is developed and this is mentally slash emotionally and manifested materially and slash physic uh, physically it's the start point and the start point is always in your imagination it is always in your imagination and the imagination we've already done that is absolutely huge absolutely huge so the universal law of process it's about setting things into motion or setting a direction that really invokes the the universal law of order in creation this law speaks of creating workable implementable steps and again this is a conscious awareness it's conscious awareness so it speaks of creating workable inc in incremental incremental steps to support you in achieving your goals skipping a single step the law of patience skipping a single step in the process or trying to take a shortcut shortcut often results in the process not working out the way in which you want it and actually it can result in failure and while I don't believe in failure because failure is just showing you another thing that you need to do another way in which you may need to go but the universal law of process is in place so that you do start the creative process you do what needs to be done and you don't try and take shortcuts to do what it is that you need to be needs to be done this law also invokes the universal law of expectation and expectation is one of those another one of those laws that are huge expectation um, for me has 
is on the same level of belief. You know, you need to expect that which you say that you want. How can you ask for something and not expect it? How can you ask for something and, and, and not expect it? That just doesn't even make any sense. Absolutely no sense. So let's see, guys. I've got about five minutes. And so let's see if I can do the universal law of rebound. This is huge. Rebound, the actual word means to spring back. Bounce back, come back. And note, this isn't the same as the universal law of return, which we're going to get to. Rebound is all about your divine right to come out of any situation, whether you, and, and if you deem this situation to be wrong, if you deem this situation, and I'm going to use the word negative, if you deem this situation to be hateful, whatever it is, okay, it allows you to come out of any situation and or experience stronger, wiser and more confident about yourself than you were prior to having it. Traumatic events in our lives create a natural occurring catapult, catapult action. And again, Traumatic events in our lives create a naturally, sorry, occurring catapult action. And that is by design. That is by design. It's meant to instill, the universal law of rebound is meant to instill a, a sense of hope. It's meant to invoke faith. And this is by seeing a kernel of good in any situation. Once again, rebound is about your divine right to come out of an experience stronger, wiser, more confident about yourself for having that particular experience. And this is no matter what the experience is. Traumatic events in our lives create a naturally occurring catapult action that by design is meant to instill a sense of hope, um, a sense of faith, a sense of belief in seeing a kernel of good in that situation. And once you are able to see that on the rebound, then you can make a choice and use that kernel to move forward. It's like seeing the light at the end of a tunnel. Seeing a light at the end of a tunnel. The universal laws of attraction are switched on by our actions. So guys, as things unfold in your life that aren't right, that are horrible, that shouldn't have happened, that are heinous, that are heinous, that are wrong, that are evil, that are demonic, the whole nine yards, whatever term you want to use, bounce back. Bounce back. Look for that glimmer of light. Look for that kernel of good in that situation. Look for what it is teaching you, what, what it's showing you. So guys, I'm actually going to end it here. I'm going to end it here and the next law is the law of secrecy although I don't see the law of return I don't see the law of return guys I need to find the law of return okay that is my work to work on um we're going to look at the law of reversed eff effort that will be where we will pick up so reversed effort and I have to find the law of see, uh, the law of return. I don't know where that law is. I don't see it on my sheet. I don't know where it is, but I need to find the law of return because that is um, definitely an interesting law that can definitely affect you and the things that you are doing in your life. Definitely. So anyway, guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. And I hope that you are actually... Um, uh, getting a more, I'm going to use the word in its entirety, uh, in its true form, 
a more holistic idea of the laws of attraction and if you're still stuck on the law of attraction that you can see how much um, uh, you can see how vast this is and the fact that one of my my mentors Florence Scrovel Shin the late great Florence Scrovel Shin said by the fact that we are always opening our mouth and saying something or always having thought processes, we are always actually creating laws for ourselves. By the words we speak, by what we, what we believe, by the desires we have, and by the wanting that we want for things to manifest in our lives, we are always creating laws for ourselves. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this um, episode. If you do have any questions, be sure, be sure to reach out to me, you know, um, Dr. Wendy at it's my life, my choice.com. I am on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. Reach out to me and, and ask me. And one of the things I do, if I have several people who ask me the same question, uh, I will do a recorded answer, uh, for the most part, uh, unless it's something really personal and then I will come directly to you but that being said uh, enjoy the rest of your week as it is it's Tuesday today so enjoy the rest of your week I'm Dr Wendy Dearborn and I so appreciate you guys for actually taking the time out to listen and be a part of actually my personal growth you know you guys you guys Mm, I don't suppose you even know this, but you guys actually help me to help myself to become all that I am designed to be. You help me to live my purpose. So on that note, guys, bless you all. And until next time, peace.